Welcome to Marukyu, the world's best scientific bait company. I believe that Marukyu baits are the very, very best in the world. But to achieve them, we need to know a few basics. And this section is all about how to use Marukyu pace. We're going to talk about two pace today, AFPA 300 and AFP 310. And later I shall tell you exactly what the difference is. But the first thing when we get this bag of paste is how we're going to mix it. The very, very first thing we're going to do is shake the bag. You might think, why? Well, it's traveled 7,000 miles across the oceans and we want to make sure all the particles are evenly mixed up. If we look on the back of the bag, it's very, very simple. It tells you the ratio and on these paste, it is exactly a one-to-one -one mix. And that's what we're going to do. They're in self-seal bags, so you don't have to use a great deal. Just mix up what you're going to need. So all I do is use a very, very small measuring container. You'll be surprised how far this is going to go. So it says on the bag, one to one, let's do exactly what it says. Okay, I've got one level cupful of this measuring beaker of our paste. Okay, we'll plonk him in there. It says one to one, so we're going to go in exactly and I mean exactly one measuring cupful of water. All we need to do is swish it around. You might say, hang about, this looks a little bit like wallpaper paste. Well, it's supposed to. As you can see, I've stirred it round, just trying to get some air into it. Again, as with the instructions, all it says is pull it to one side of the bowl and rest it for three minutes. You'll probably find it's an advantage if you use a little Teflon coated bowl like this. And as I say, you don't need a, knot, a lot. Mix exactly the amount you think you'll need, because don't forget, it's only going to take you three minutes to mix the same mix again. So we'll put that down and rest it for three minutes. Well, that's about the three minutes. Now, this is the clever thing. All I'm going to do is split the bait, use a wet hand, it always helps, into two parts. The first part is the part I'm now going to fish with. But what I'm going to do with the wet hand is just actually just compress it down. I don't want you to pick it up and mould it. And you'll see why in a minute. So just sort of compress it down a little bit. As I say, with a wet hand, it'll just push some of the, the air out of it. We're now ready to fish with it. Just turn it over and we're ready to go. So that's the piece we're going to use. But before I put a hook into it, it's worth looking at why it's so good. And what I'm going to do is pull a piece off and I'm just going to pull it apart. And if you look very, very carefully, you're going to see some tiny fibres. In fact, these are gluten fibres. And this is the part that's going to mean it's going to hold on to your hook. There we go, you can see all these fibres. So once you understand these fibres, it'll make sense when I show you how to hook it. So again, working with a wet hand, we're ready to go. Always use a hook that's proportionate to the size of the paste you're going to use. And at this time of the year, the water's still quite cold, um, I'm going to use a piece of paste about as big as my little fingernail. So there's my hook, and as you can see, it just fits nicely in the middle of my fingernail. So what I'm saying, if you're going to use a piece that size, don't use a size 18 hook. Use a hook that is good enough to hold that piece of paste on. And don't use a very, very heavy hook. This is precision bait, it's scientifically developed. It will sink very, very slowly. So therefore it's gonna compensate the weight of the hook anyway. So simple things like that are gonna catch you a lot more fish. Now you might think it's simple to hook paste on, it is, but to hook it on correctly is a different thing altogether. So, this is what I'm gonna do, using my wet hand. Imagine these fibers in there. What I don't want to do is break the fibers. So I'm putting the hook in and then I'm molding it around the top. Okay. Now the reason I've done that, if you think about it, I've actually molded it so the fibers are overhanging the bend of the hook. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that if I pull that, there we go, you can see it, and you can see these fibers look hanging onto the hook. That's the piece. That's the part that's going to keep it on the hook. It's very, very easy to make some paste that will stop on the hook. 
it is not easy to make a paste that will stop on the hook and catch fish. And this is what this paste is all about. It is a big difference. So that's what we've done. We've actually pushed the hook around the bend. We've molded it on. All right, we're ready to go. But the next thing is, why does it catch fish? And that's what we're going to look at next. Understanding how this bait works is going to catch you an enormous amount of fish. So what I'm going to do is drop it into this glass beaker and we can just watch what happens. Okay. First thing you'll notice, within seconds you can start to see small pieces coming off. Now these are the visual attractors. There's nothing worse than a paste that is absolutely dead in the water. What you can't see, of course, is the water-soluble parts that are the key attractors and the key triggers for getting these fish there. But as you can see now, it really we've only really been in the water 10 seconds, and there we have, we've got a really active paste. I'm going to leave that there. In fact, it's sinking down to the bottom, and people say to me, how long will it stay on that hook? I can tell you now, if we don't move that, that'll be there in 30 minutes' time with that hook in the middle. In a fishing situation, it's got no chance, because I tell you now, if there's a fish there, that will be gone, not in 30 minutes, within three minutes. So that's the important thing. Obviously, when we're pace fishing, where a lot of people go wrong, particularly beginners, they think every time they pull out, that paste is going to be on the hook. If you pull out and your paste is on the hook, the paste is too hard. So don't expect to keep lifting out and finding the paste on. But do a simple test like this in a cup, in a bait tin, and there we are, look, you can see that bait, look how active it is, it's unbelievable. But that hook is stuck there right in the middle of it. And that's the key to catching fish. The other thing, of course, which is important, if we have a paste that's too stiff, of course, when you strike, how's the hook going to get the fish? So we've got the incredible balancing act here. We've got the right density, which means the speed it's going to fall at. We've got the right amount of tractors, tractors falling off. The amino acids are all doing the job. But when we strike, and I'm just going to pull that quickly, you can see there I pulled it straight through. But look at that for a classic example. I pulled that straight through, and those gluten fibers are still hanging onto the hook. Absolutely perfect balance. <laughs> Thank you.